Hello and welcome to Bone Shaker, a small family coaster with a steampunk theme, which I'll try to make in this hopefully short series. Now I do realize that Bone Shaker is kind of an unusual name and that steampunk is also a very loosely defined sort of subculture which not everybody is entirely familiar with, so I do want to give a very quick Though, it's probably going to end up being a quite lengthy introduction to this coaster. Basically, I'm going to try to go for a sort of Victorian steampunk theme to the coaster. For two reasons, I think it's a really nice theme. And I also think it's a really good way to make use of the new pieces and availabilities, if that is a good word to use in Alpha 2. Which, the first thing is basically because I just love the sort of general theme. It's really got the sort of 19th century Victorian architecture in it. It's definitely got a lot of those ironworks and really intricate details and ornaments on the buildings. Uh, it's kind of similar also in that sense to um, Disney Main Street buildings, for instance, have some really Victorian touches on them. And you really see this kind of architecture in general detailing um, a lot in movies and games. Stuff like the Golden Compass, I think it's really steampunk-ish. I feel Professor Layton is somewhat steampunk as well. Uh, Bioshock is definitely very steampunk. There are lots of books, um, even some bands and things which have these sort of subculture to them. And it's also something which can quite easily be translated into um, buildings because it really has that, that Victorian sort of architecture to it, but still with a sort of industrial gritty twists with lots of uh, gears and cogs and pipes which is what the steampunk theme is most famous for I think and sort of brassy colors um, so yeah I really just want to go for it because I think it is a really interesting theme and it looks nice but I also think it works quite well with the pieces in the game so far uh, as you can see you can actually make quite good use of the new rotation system to get the windows in a sort of really interesting arrangement there to make the uh, typical train station round dome-ish uh, glass roof which is something that I've always sort of wanted to try and fits really well with the steampunk theme I think and it's really with the new rotation system that I feel there's a lot more flexibility in how you use certain pieces and especially given with the amount of detail that the Victorian and steampunk-ish buildings have and the way that the detail was really made up by a lot of iron work um, and glass and all sorts of more industrial details. I think it's a good way to make use of the new rotation system. It's also quite nice with the newest pieces like the arches because even though they're obviously classical arches I think they work quite well for the sort of Victorian touch that I'm trying to make with the buildings and there's also some other stuff like the pipes have gotten a sort of change to their look like the entire pipes are now black but you can make use of a glitch in the game to actually rotate even wall pieces and uh, pillars to any sort of direction you want with the new uh, rotation system so I can definitely make good use of those pipes to make some some of those like um, well pipe works that you see in steampunk buildings and things like that and it'll definitely be interesting to see how the cogs and gears can be made with all sorts of different pieces, uh, which you'll see in the future as well. So yeah, in general I think it's just a really fun theme to try and it should work pretty well with the new stuff in Alpha 2. Not to mention that for the coaster itself, I kind of want to make a sort of Disney-esque family coaster, kind of like the uh, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, nothing too really big, but still a coaster that really makes use of the terraforming and a lot of very heavy, dense theming around the coaster. Uh, but still, it is on quite a small scale. So I won't really entirely make this a huge coaster or anything. And it won't be park. Uh, it won't be part of a park in general. It'll just be one sort of coaster as one little project that I want to work on just to be able to test this theme and then sort of move on to other projects or have other projects in the background in the meantime. Which just makes it easier to try different themes and also makes it a bit easier on my PC and the frame rate and all that stuff. Now to actually talk about the building for a little bit. Uh, this was actually one of my favorite parts and one of the things that I was actually really happy with finding out. Like before I built this station and started recording, I just wanted to try a couple of things and made like a few test builds as I usually do of the theme to see if it could actually work. And it was actually with that that I kind of got used to the new rotation system, which is actually a major game changer. As you can see, it's much easier to just place objects in all sorts of rotations that you want. 
and make sure that they all sort of neatly fit together so you can pretty much nearly shape anything you want and even though it takes a bit of time I was actually really happy and amazed to see how well this spire could actually work out and I really just wanted to have this sort of Victorian uh, very Main Street-ish spire as the sort of main draw to the building because obviously it is a pretty small station uh, but I do want to get like a lot of detail and some vertical elements like a few towers and um, roofs in there just to make it look a little bit bigger and more interesting than just a standard small train station. Um, it's also going to be quite similar actually in the way it looks to Disneyland's entrance train station in Anaheim. Um, it's also a bit inspired by the, what's it called, the Mystic Manor in Hong Kong Disneyland and just in general those sort of end of the 19th century Victorian homes and palaces. Uh, it really takes a lot of the inspiration from that. Now I haven't talked about the name of this coaster yet, which is actually quite a funny story. Or, uh, it's actually a terrible story. Basically what I did, um, and I'm not entirely sure about the name, I think it's alright, but I guess I've just thought about it for too long and it's really hard to come up with a name that you really, really love anyway. But I actually spent hours trying to come up with a name for this thing because Truth be told, I am not that familiar with steampunk in general. It's just that the steampunk that I'm going for, because like I said, it is a very loosely defined genre and there are many different sort of subcultures within the subculture of steampunk. Uh, so you also have like the futuristic steampunk and uh, western steampunk, which is actually quite popular. Um, and I'm really going for that Victorian end of the 19th century sort of steampunk which also kind of makes sense in a historical sense in that it was like the period of time just after the Industrial Revolution when people these people found out that they could just instantly replicate all sorts of details and ironworks with the new steam machinery which caused many of the buildings around that time to be built with a lot of details even the factories just because people could with um, like all of the steam machines that they had at the time and I kind of wanted to get that sort of name reflecting in the um, coast as well. So I went with Bone Shaker in the end after, and this is the stupid part of the name, after I found like a public domain book on the internet, which was written by someone at the beginning of the 20th century, which was like one of these uh, preserving the English for future generations kind of books. It was literally just a book with slang of the uh, late 19th and early 20th century. And I figured it was a pretty nice way to get some inspiration for a name of this coaster, but I didn't really find anything. I started at Z and went to A for some really odd reason. Um, and there wasn't really too much in the book that I really liked. But I actually came across the name Bone Shaker and thought it was really interesting. And actually, you might have heard of it before. It um, actually is the word, or actually the name, I think, of the first bicycle or one of the first bicycles and it's called Bone Shaker because it just was such a weird bicycle that it shakes your bones I guess. It's one of these older bicycles with a really funky design and um, like wheels that aren't the same size and I really figured it kind of fits the name because it really is that sort of late 19th century contraption kind of iron thing and it just felt like a fun name for the coaster to have. It also has that sort of steampunky feel to it because it is like kind of an industrial object and something that we don't actually use anymore, which is also one of the ideas of steampunk. It's a really a mishmash of all sorts of things, but it's kind of futuristic and very antique at the same time because it's really old and it draws a lot from the older music and the older architecture and older fashion, while at the same time having all sorts of machinery and industrial sort of things in it. I think it's also often said to be placed in a sort of alternate universe where we still follow the sort of Victorian uh, fashion and architecture and everything. But yeah, that is basically why I wanted to go with this name. Um, I also wanted to build that quick other dome over there, by the way, which is just one of those other things which I'm really happy with how it turned out. And it's sort of embarrassing that it's actually always been possible. Like I figured it wasn't really possible to build small domes and spires on a one tile footprint before, but it's always been more or less possible. It's just been made a lot easier with the new rotation system, but it's definitely something which I'm really happy with how they turn out, um, especially the sort of clean look that they have. One of the most important things I felt for myself that I wanted to make sure with this building and this theme in general is to make sure that it kind of looks clean. 
Um, by which I kind of mean that everything doesn't just sort of generally, generally look wh like what it's supposed to be, but it actually convincingly looks like what it's supposed to be and doesn't really remind you of what it actually is or what it should be. So, um, for instance, I really wanted to make sure that these spires don't look like they're made out of different roof pieces and just sort of follow the general shape and design of a real spire, but actually look like they're convincing spire pieces and don't have any like weird odds and ends sticking out and um, little sort of unorganized parts that are just sort of parts of the spire just because they're built out of different pieces. Like I want to try to make it as convincing as possible. Hence also why I kind of want to avoid things that aren't um, possible in a really convincing way. Though I can't always get it the exact way I really want to, especially with the more industrial pieces because obviously there aren't really any chimneys or gear pieces or um, actual real pipes that are meant to be pipes in the game at the moment. And definitely when it comes to the Victorian ironworks, there is nothing that even closely resembles it in the game. So I kind of just try to use the different pieces uh, like the balconies and the wooden things to sort of create a general feel of that sort of architecture and use the um, the current black sort of framework which I think is just supposed to hold up billboards and things like that to at least create the color and the overall look and design of the gritty steampunk uh, Victorian architecture which is why I did want to have the, that glass as a uh, sort of domed roof as well because it automatically comes with that dark black gritty color to it and why I wanted to frame some parts of the building with the iron frameworks even though it doesn't really make that much sense I just figured it would be a good way to get that that black iron framework in there and that goes for the fences especially I do think it works quite well for the fences like over here it is still a pretty convincing sort of black fence you just don't really get the really Victorian ornaments in there and all the intricate details and twirls and stuff like that but it's Somewhat close, I figure. At least the most close thing that we can possibly do at the moment because there are no real small details like that in the game, at least as of yet. And when it comes to the back side of the building, I do want to add a few things, like not leave it completely empty. I never really like the entire approach of the back of a building just being able to ignore that because it's pretty important, especially in this case since I do want to have like heavy scenery around the entire station and not just make it a sort of separate station but really make sure that um, you have paths coming out on both sides and that it has some interaction with the scenery around it and it is going to be quite a heavily themed ride in general in the end. Um, so I don't want to completely ignore the, the back of the station but the front is definitely the main sort of draw to it and where I wanted to have the biggest heaviest accents and hence also why I wanted to have the two towers over there which did turn out to be a little bit too visually similar I guess to the train station that is the entrance of Disneyland uh, which was actually something that I only discovered afterwards. Um, I was mainly going for a Mystic Manor sort of idea with this station with a central tower right on top of the middle of the station but I figured it wouldn't really work with the dome because one of the really tough parts to get right with the dome over here and while you might see me juggling with all of the different pieces to get like pieces around the, the sort of domed glass is that it's just a very very narrow sort of windowy um, roof and I can't really sink any walls into that because then it'll, it'll look really awkward from the interior of the station. So hence why it's also kind of hard sometimes to add things around the station. But yeah the backside is just one copy of the front sort of entrance arch with a small roof with a little test sort of dormer which I figured it would actually be quite nice to use the bells which are only possible if you really have a wall to sink them into to get some of those uh, iron accents to at least get a bit more of that industrial steampunky feeling into the station. Another thing actually which is you might have noticed in this video is that I got some new music. Um, I try to get new music for every single series that I get and try to sort of fit it with the theme. It's just kind of hard to exactly do that with steampunk since what mostly defines steampunk music as a subgenre is just that it's part of the steampunk community if you will and it has sort of steampunk acts around it uh, but I really figured some of that other electro swing though mostly some really old sort of turn of the 20th century 
kind of breakbeat and trip hop music is just what I really like personally and works quite well for the theme, I think, since it has that mixture of the the old and the new and that really, um, well, industrial feeling to it as well. Now, I skipped a section of the time lapse here, or rather, I forgot to time lapse that part. I actually forgot to record it. Uh, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, all I did in that small section though was just add some parts which turned out to be a real hassle so maybe better that I didn't record it because that was a lot of trial and error to get them the way I wanted them to um, and just add a few rocks and some simple foliage and a simple black fence around the coaster. At this point I also tried to make a chimney which will definitely come back at some point in the future but not something that I want to have around this part, and especially not something I want to have around the station, because the station is more or less going to be a weenie as you want to enter the en the uh, ride, and definitely want to keep the station the tallest building within its sort of general surroundings to make that really what draws your attention around here. And I figured one way to get some simple scenery, because every single thing that I make, I'm somehow going to make, somehow going to have to make, all of the different pieces into industrial looking things and I figured a um, gasometer would actually work quite well um, if that is actually how you pronounce it over here which is one of those like old gas storage tanks which rise up and uh, go down during the day which they used to build at the end of the 19th century I think it also has a sort of factory look to it and it's one more excuse to get some pipelines and uh, pipeworks in general machinery around this area and I definitely do want to fill up the area around the station a bit more, um, but I'm really gonna have to find out how to give every single part of the ride its own sort of useless contraption and machinery kind of look to it. Anyway, that's about it for the time lapse for today, but I do have some real life shots, or real time shots, I should say, uh, just to show it off a little bit better than what you see in the time lapse. This is basically what the station looks like from the front, although not directly from the front. It it's just that I find I usually just make buildings in a way that they're meant to be viewed from one sort of particular place. Not that they would look bad from other places, but generally kind of build a building from one place. And that last shot was definitely sort of the best shot to view the building from, I think, and what I sort of intention intended it to be seen from. Uh, the front is definitely pretty important too, though where it really resembles the Disneyland station quite a bit, even though it has all sorts of different details and um, some different general shapes. It still has the sort of standard two towers, and the interior is really similar to an old train station with all of the pillars and the arches on the roof and things like that. Um, I might put some more scenery in there, actually. And then the building from a sort of top-down perspective basically looks like this. It's actually not that big of a building, and looks a bit larger than it really is because of the forced perspective of being the uh, being placed on a hill. But that's all just kind of part of the idea of the ride. It's going to be quite a small ride, but I'll try to make it look a bit larger than it really should. Anyway, that is really about it for today. So thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time.